At this time, as part of the, the ceremony, I'd like to invite um, the, the mother of the bride, Sarah, to come forward and the mother of the groom, Elaine, to come forward. And uh, we're going to ask them to light these two side candles. Um, Sarah and Elaine have brought the, the, their two children into the world and the, the candles are symbolic of the, the light and the lives that they've brought into the world. And a, a bit later on in the service, we'll have the bride and groom will take the two side candles and uh, light the middle candle together as we celebrate two becoming one as, as they're married together. So it's a nice thing to do. So could we have uh, Calmo come forward and uh, Sarah and Elaine. Who gives this bride in marriage? I do. Ashley, take your bride and step forward, please. Ask that the congregation remain standing as we go before the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the privileges of being in the body of Christ. We've come together to watch the miracle of your love and the power of your spirit work in the lives of these two people. We give you the praise, the honour and the glory for the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to bring us into a place of union with the Father, union with the Son, union with the Holy Spirit and union with one another. We thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite Nikki Finlayson to come forward and uh, she's going to read a poem. When the one whose hand you're holding is the one who holds your heart, when the one whose eyes you gaze into gives your hopes and dreams their start, when the one you think of first and last is the one who holds you tight, and the things you plan together make the whole world seem just right, when the one whom you believe in puts their faith and trust in you you've found the one and only love you'll share your whole life through. Shona and Ashley have found the one. As they grow old together, may they become the best of friends and fall more and more in love. As I read scripture from the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians, I want you both to pay very close attention to the words stated here. They are words from God's word that the Holy Spirit will honour as we stand on them in faith. The world has the idea that marriage is simply a legal contract. It is a legal contract and we don't make light of that. But at the same time, it's a spiritual contract. When words of faith are spoken according to the word of God, the power of God comes into operation. There's an actual miracle that takes place when the faith of these two people is released in God's power. God honours their faith and brings them into union together. With these thoughts in mind, listen very carefully to these words. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the saviour of the body. 
Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so that let, let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. In the eyes of Almighty God, these two people are washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They have prayed, and before the Lord God himself, they believe with all their hearts that it is the perfect will of God for them to be joined together in the Spirit. They've made their decision, so from now until the end of this age, I charge you, the congregation, to do everything in your power to see that this union remains solid and strong and happy and prosperous. Woe be to any person who would tamper with this union and cause it to be anything other than prosperous in the eyes of God. This is a miraculous thing, and it is of God. Ashley James Oldham, do you call all present witness that you take Shona and Adam as your lawful wife? I do. Do you promise to support and love her for life, and do you solemnly pledge before God and these witnesses that you will be faithful to her for the remainder of your life. I do. Do you, Shona and Adam, declare that as far as you know, there is no lawful impediment to your proposed marriage with Ashley James Oldham, here present, and that you call all present to witness that you take Ashley as your lawful husband? I do. Do you promise to love, honour, and obey him, and do you solemnly pledge before God and these witnesses that you will be a faithful wife for the remainder of your life? I do. Ashley, would you please turn to Shona and say this to her? I love you, Shona. I love you, Shona. And today in the presence of our family and friends. And today in the presence of our family and friends. I pledge my love to you. I pledge my love to you. I love you. I love you. As Christ loved the church. As Christ loved the church. Giving my life for yours. Giving my life for yours. I will lead and protect you. I will lead and protect you. As we share our lives with God. As we share our lives with God. Who gave us to one another. Who gave us to one another. I promise before the Lord. I promise before the Lord. To honour and cherish you to honour and cherish you. As God enables me, as God enables me, I will provide for you. I will provide for you. And to all your needs and desires. To all your needs and desires. Shona, I love you. Shona, I love you. Be my wife. Be my wife. <laughs> Shona, will you turn to Ashley and say this to him? I love you, Ashley. I love you, Ashley. And I've longed for this day. And I've longed for this day. I promise to make you a home. I promise to make you a home. Where there will be peace for your soul. Where there will be peace for your soul. And joy for your heart. And joy for your heart. My goal is to be a faithful wife. My goal is to be a faithful wife. And to help fulfill your goals and dreams. And to help fulfill your goals and dreams. I give you your place. I give you your place. As the head of our home. As the head of our home. I will respect you. I will respect you. Love you and believe in you. Love you and believe in you. From this day forward, I need you. From this day forward, I need you. I'm proud to become your wife. I'm proud to become your wife. 
Ashley and Shona, I want to, you to understand the miracle that takes place in marriage. Your spirits will be joined together and you will become one. You will not be one just in the eyes of the law. There is something much more powerful that happens. The very creative power of God will join you together. Don't ever tamper with this union. The love of God doesn't say, I love you, but do you really love me? The love of God says very simply, I love you. That's all it ever says. Don't ever tamper with that miracle. Don't ever let the sun go down on your wrath. Something holy, something beyond reproach, will take place by the Spirit of God inside your bosom, and it's a precious thing. I want to speak to the witnesses, Callum and Kirsty. Callum, Kirsty, could you just come forward to, for a second? Jesus said in the 18th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. You're not here just because of tradition. You're here for a serious purpose, to bear witness forever of the miraculous union that will take place and to add your agreement before God to that which takes place. Don't ever, ever, ever tamper with that agreement. From this day forward, regardless of what comes, you're in agreement with this union. Don't ever attempt in any way to cause it to be anything other than a happy union. Leo, would you come forward? May I have the, the bride's rings, please? Okay. Maybe you can, maybe Callum can help you. Okay. 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 Let's see. Okay. Okay. Good job, Leo. Okay, thanks. You can sit down, Kirsten. It's okay. <laughs> okay. A ring is a very precious thing. A token of your faith and your love. This ring is made out of precious metal. It's a never-ending circle that indicates the continuing love of God. A love that never fails, never presents itself haughty nor puffed up. The love of God and the faith of God is what causes his power to move in your lives. I want you to wear these rings as a continual reminder of your faith, a continual reminder of the confession of faith you have made to each other and to God. The word of God says, above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. If anyone could break up this union, it would be Satan, so give him no place, give him no place. This union is forever. Take this ring, place it on her finger, and say this to her. With this ring, with this ring, I give you my love. I give you my love. I pledge you my faith and trust. I pledge you my faith and trust. For as long as we live. For as long as we live. Receive it as a symbol. Receive it as a symbol. Of our endless union. Of our endless union. And unbroken love. And unbroken love. Leo. May I have the groom's ring, please? Thank you very much. A ring can mean two very different things. It can be a never-ending sign of love, or it can be a shackle. I'm going to charge you with a memory you should remember always. This woman stands by your side, not under your feet. You have the responsibility of being the head of this union. You have the spiritual responsibility. And I want you to wear this ring in remembrance that she is your helpmate. It must never be a shackle of dominance, but always a reminder of faith and love. 
I want you to place this ring on his finger with these things in mind. There is no place in the word of God that gives people the right to dominate one another. Your vows have stated that you submit to one another in the responsibilities of this life, expecting God and his power to always make the difference. So place this ring on his finger, and as you do, say this to him. With this ring, With this ring. I give you my love. I give you my love. I pledge you my faith and trust. I pledge you my faith and trust. For as long as we live. For as long as we live. Receive it as a symbol. Receive it as a symbol. Of our endless union. Of our endless union. And our unbroken love. And our unbroken love. So please join right hands. As a representative of Jesus Christ before Almighty God, and in the name of the Father of his Son Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, I now pronounce you one together. You are now husband and wife. You may now kiss the bride. <laughs> Galatians chapter 3 says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might be heirs of the promise of the Spirit. 1 Peter chapter 3 says a man and his wife are heirs together in the grace of life. I'm going to read you your blessing, your inheritance, so listen carefully. According to Deuteronomy chapter 28, all these blessings will come on you and overtake you if you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kine, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command a blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy, thy hand to do. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God has given thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee, and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord sware unto the fathers to give thee. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only and not beneath, if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Could you slowly turn, turn round to face the congregation? Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present Mr and Mrs. Oldham. Congratulations, Thank you.